fourth and fifth grade book talks presented by Jackson County Library Services. Cat versus Dog by James Patterson. Everyone knows that cats hate dogs and dogs hate cats. It's what they do. Always have, always will. Oscar and Molly are no different. Oscar is a dog. His favorite thing is hanging his head out the window of his father's pickup and chasing things and breakfast and seeing squirrels. But his favorite, favorite thing is listening to his father yell at kibble-brained cats. Molly is a cat. She dreams of being an actress. She thinks that dogs are dumb with a capital D and disgusting. Dogs slobber all over themselves. They're forever tossing tennis balls and they've got stinky beef jerky dog breath. This year, Oscar and Molly are camping with their families at Western Frontier Park. One of the great things about the park is there's a separate camping area for the cats and the dogs. Oscar loves that he hasn't seen a snooty cat or a scratching post in five full days. But then Molly sneaks off into the woods to practice her acting, and she gets hopelessly lost. And when Oscar is out on a nature hike, he chases a flying squirrel into the woods, and he gets hopelessly lost. Their families are in a panic. The woods around the park are full of fierce and wild creatures, mountain lions, grizzly wolf bears, and the dreaded weasel boar. Even with her brains and his speed, there's not much chance that Molly or Oscar will survive on their own. Maybe they could make it if they would work together. Ha, but that's just not going to happen. This is Cat vs. Dog by James Patterson. Real Pigeons Fight Crime by Andrew McDonald. Rock Pigeon lives on a farm with a flock of pigeons, some farm animals, and a pack of llamas. One day, an old pigeon shows up and says he's starting a squad of crime-fighting pigeons in the city. He wants Rock to join them as their master of disguise. Rock thinks dressing up to fight crime sounds exciting, so he flies off to the city with the old pigeon. Now, there are several reasons that pigeons are perfect for fighting crime. They're everywhere, they're fast, and they can attack. Rock is worried, though. What if fighting crime is scary? What if they come across bird catchers, or crows, or even worse, cats? He forgets all that, though, when they arrive in the city, because there are parks everywhere, parks full of breadcrumbs. Like all pigeons, Rock loves breadcrumbs. It's like if you found a park full of pizza, french fries, and ice cream. Rock is very happy. When they land in the park where the old pigeon lives, Rock takes a look around. There's something weird going on. Then it hits him. Where are the breadcrumbs? All the breadcrumbs in the park have mysteriously vanished. It will take a squad of fearless pigeons to find out why. This is Real Pigeons Fight Crime by Andrew McDonald. Restart by Gordon Corman. Chase Ambrose falls off a roof in the summer before eighth grade. He's in a coma for four days, and when he wakes up, he has no memory of his life before the accident. Here's what he learns about himself in the weeks before school starts. First of all, he's a great athlete. There are newspaper clippings and trophies all over his bedroom. Second, he has two best friends, Aaron and Bear. There's a picture on his phone of the three of them together. They're grinning like crazy. They're holding a baseball bat with the remains of some kid's Halloween pumpkin smashed on the end. Third, he has some enemies. This he figures out the day he smiles at a girl, and she immediately marches over and dumps her vanilla frozen yogurt on his head, chocolate sprinkles and all. Chase's mom fills him in on a lot of things, but he can't shake the feeling that she's leaving something out, that there's something about his life that she doesn't want him to know. This is Restart by Gordon Corman. Click by Kayla Miller. Olive has a bunch of friends. She watches movies with Hugh and Willow, eats lunch with Ava, Franny, and Emily, and plays kickball with Dave, Jesse, and Nicole. 
She doesn't mind not having a best best friend because she likes doing different things with all her different friends. But when the fifth grade variety show is announced, right away everyone else has a group and an idea for the performance. Her movie-watching friends are doing a magic show, her lunch friends are preparing a cheerleading act, and her kickball friends are choreographing a dance. Nobody asks Olive to join their group. Suddenly, she feels like she doesn't belong anywhere, and she still has to figure out something to do for the show. This is Click, a graphic novel by Kayla Miller, and Olive's story continues with Camp and Act. The Great Treehouse War by Lisa Graff When Winnie's parents get divorced, they want to make sure she spends exactly the same amount of time with each of them every week. So she's going to live with her mom on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. And she'll be with her dad on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And on Wednesdays, that pesky leftover day, she'll stay in a treehouse exactly on the property line between her dad's place and her mom's place. It's the only way her parents can agree on their arrangement. At first, Winnie is horrified that her parents expect her to live by herself in a treehouse once a week. But as the months go by, Wednesdays in the treehouse become her favorite day of the week. It's not that she dislikes her parents, but they're going over the top crazy trying to outdo one another. It all starts when Winnie's mom realizes she'll never get to have Thanksgiving with her daughter again. And Thanksgiving was their one really big family holiday of the year. Thanksgiving is always on a Thursday, and Thursday is the dad's day. So the mom decides she's going to make a really big deal out of celebrating Flag Day instead. All right, but the dad, he hears about that, and he decides he's going to go all out for World UFO Day. He gets sleeping bags and binoculars, and they camp out in the backyard that night, searching for signs of alien life. Before long, Winnie is spending six nights a week in some extravagant holiday celebration. They do Ice Cream Sandwich Day, Cow Appreciation Day, National Slinky Day. Three hours spent sending the slinky down the hallway stairs. There's no time for anything else. No time for doodling, daydreaming, or even doing her homework, except on Wednesdays. When Winnie finds out she's in serious danger of completely failing fifth grade because she's been too busy celebrating crazy holidays, she tries to talk to her parents. Now, they don't listen. So this is when she declares that she is going up in her treehouse and not coming down until they can be reasonable. This is the start of the Great Treehouse War. Under Their Skin by Margaret Peterson Haddix Nick and Aaron are twins. They're 12 years old. Their parents have been divorced for ages, so they're surprised when their mother suddenly announces that she's getting remarried. They don't believe her when she says their life won't change much. After all, they'll have a stepdad, they'll be moving into a different house, and they'll have new step-siblings. Their mom says they'll never have to meet their new stepbrother and stepsister. What? Why? Who are these kids? Why can't they meet them? They'll even be sharing the same house. Every other week, when Nick and Aaron are with their dad, these kids will be in the new house with the twins' mom and stepdad. Nick and Aaron want to find out more, but the grown-ups act like even asking questions about these kids is putting everyone's life in danger. This is Under Their Skin by Margaret Peterson Haddix, and there's a sequel called In Over Their Heads. Masterminds by Gordon Corman Eli lives in a perfect town, Serenity, New Mexico, where every house has a swimming pool, every kid has a treehouse, and there's no such thing as crime. Eli has never been out of Serenity before. There's really no reason to leave. But one day, he and a friend go for a long bike ride that takes them beyond the town limits. 
Eli looks back, and he sees that sign behind him that says, Welcome to Serenity, America's Ideal Community. All of a sudden, just past that sign, he starts to feel sick to his stomach. He gets this blinding headache. It's the worst pain he's ever felt. He tries to pedal and keep up with his friend, but he can't. He topples off his bike. He's afraid he's dying. A moment later, a large military-type helicopter thunders in and lands near him. Inside the helicopter is Eli's dad and a half a dozen security guys. They load him into the helicopter and they give him a painkiller. That's the last thing he remembers from that very strange day. When Eli begins to recover from the incident, he realizes that his dad, the doctor, and maybe even every single adult in that little town are hiding something. Something big. Eli and his friends set out to discover what's really going on in their seemingly perfect town. Little do they know, they'll uncover evidence linking Serenity, New Mexico, to some of the greatest criminal masterminds in the country. This is Masterminds. That's the start of a trilogy. It's followed by Criminal Destiny and Payback. Sparks by Ian Boothby. Sparks is a hero. The dog has rescued a baby from the bottom of a well, a family from the top of a burning building, and a boat from a freak storm. He never sticks around after his daring rescues, never stays to get petted and told what a good boy he is. Because in truth, Sparks is not a dog at all. Sparks is a super-powered robotic dog suit controlled by two cats. There's August, the smartest cat alive and inventor of the dog suit, and Charlie, the bravest cat in the world and pilot of the dog suit. The two cats don't know it yet, but they're up now against the worst threat yet, a sweet little baby called Princess. Don't let her fool you. She's an alien supervillain in disguise, and she's going for total control of the world. Sparks will have to do their best work yet if they're going to save the day this time. This is Sparks, a graphic novel by Ian Boothby. Find all these titles and many others at your local branch library or visit jcls.org to access our digital collection.